talk about 14 backpacking tips that are rarely mentioned. Uh, I watch a lot of uh, backpacking YouTube videos and uh, a lot of them give the same backpacking tips. But I came up with a list of what I think are kind of uh, rarely mentioned backpacking tips. Uh, I'm sure there's some of these that, that are out there somewhere, maybe just on channels that I haven't watched before. But anyways, let's get right into it. Tip number one, keep a spare key in your ditty bag. I've seen this happen before where someone has lost their car key out on a backpacking trip. We were out on the Loyal Sock Trail, not too far from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, um, kind of north central Pennsylvania area. Um, one guy from Cleveland lost his car key on the trail somewhere. Fortunately, there was another guy from Cleveland there with us, and uh, he was able to get a ride home from him, but then he would have to come all the way back with his with the car key to get uh, to get his car. So yeah, keep a spare key in your backpack. This kind of key here with the, uh, just has the battery in it. The, I would not, same thing with a water filter. Uh, I sleep with this if, in cold weather, just so that the battery doesn't freeze. I get back to my car and I, my, car, my car won't start. So um, yeah, just a bonus tip there. One thing I did find out about this kind of key here is it won't let me lock the keys inside the car. So if I try to, if this is still inside the car and I try to lock the car, it won't lock. So I had this in my uh, in my ditty bag, which is in my backpack, put it in the trunk and the trunk would not stay closed. The trunk would just keep popping open. It took me about a week to figure out why that was happening. So yeah, just something to keep in mind there. Tip number two is go, going to involve, um, if you use a bladder system, which I quit using, but uh, here's what I found out about this. Okay, so you got the this end going into your backpack. This end's coming across here. You take a drink. And what you want to do, get, get in the habit of doing this, and it'll just automatically start doing it. If it's cold weather, the water that's still in this tube will, will start to freeze below, if it's below freezing. Uh, if it's really hot out, the water that's still in this tube, will um, it'll just be lukewarm by the time you take the next drink. So get in the habit of doing this. Take a drink, tilt this up toward up above your head, and squeeze the bite valve till all the water flows back down into the bladder so there's no, nothing in here that's going to get hot too hot or freeze. I tried an experiment one time with, uh, I got some silicone tape that's supposed to be used for um, for uh, pipes to keep pipes from freezing in the winter and I've wrapped it around here. That did nothing. Um, they also make, I'm sure people you've seen these before, they have like insulated tubes that fit these, um, that fit these uh, over top of these tubes. I don't know how well they work. I've never even tried them. So just something to keep in mind there. Tip number three is going to involve the head net. I don't really, I've never used that little bag that this little compression bag that this comes in. I can just ball it down like that. Um, I see a lot of people that's, that keep these inside their backpack, like in the main compartment of their backpack. So whenever you get into an area where there's a lot of uh, mosquitoes or, or gnats or whatever flying in your face, you got to stop, take your pack off, and get this out of your bag. That doesn't make any sense to me. But just keep it in your, in your side pocket, right, with your snacks or whatever. It's right in your backpack, right there. So it's ready to go. It, you know, anytime you walk into that swarm of mosquitoes or whatever it's right there you don't have to stop and take your pack off tip number four this is kind of a two-part uh tip these mio drinks they're really good i especially like the uh orange vanilla ones um but i quit taking these on backpacking trips um this is all liquid inside here and if it breaks if it gets on your hands or any of your gear it'll be stained like i had this on my hands for like a week one time it stained my hands so bad so I definitely don't want something like this popping open in my backpack. As you can see, I did put it in a little portion pack for a few trips, but um, yeah, I just use the uh, little powdered powdered drink tubes now, like the um, Propel. I love the Propel ones. And part two of, of that uh, of this uh, thing here is the, if you use any of these little you know packets like this, like RB sauce, hot sauce, Taco Bell sauce, uh, what is this? Arby's, some kind of RB sauce. Um, Gonna be little ketchup packets. Keep them in your um, in your cook pot. That way, there there's no chance that they're gonna break open if you accidentally put some weight on your pack and this thing breaks open inside your food bag. These will easily fit inside my cook pot. There's plenty of room left with uh, the small amount of stuff that I have inside there. And tip number five is repackage those gigantic mountain house meals. This is not a mountain house meal. This is just a ramen bowl. But you can see how much smaller you can make it if you just repackage it. Another thing you want to do is write on the outside maybe what is in the bag. Um, write the cooking instructions, like how much water you need to, re to rehydrate it. 
and also any conversion for example my cook pot doesn't say cups it just has ounces so if you're not familiar with how many ounces are in a cup or whatever uh, you might want to make them make a note of that on here just use some sharpies or whatever tip number six involves my uh, smart water bottles now this is the biggest one this is my dirty water bottle this is a one liter um, and what I found is you want to definitely keep some water in here you don't have to fill it all the way up um, maybe not even this much but what I found is if this is as tall as this is if there's no weight in it you know you bend over maybe or something this this will easily fall out or just work itself out from uh, from you walking and I've had this an empty one fall out and on the trail and didn't even know that it fell out so I was just trying to keep a little bit of weight in there so it, so it doesn't fall out or bounce out tip number eight involves firewood collecting um, if you don't have a small saw or a hatchet or whatever with you an easy way you can break a branch like say a branch is about this thick I mean you, you could step on it but some of them get a little bit too big to break by stepping on them so one thing you can do I'm sure this is probably been mentioned in quite a few uh, backpacking tip videos but I, none that I can ever remember but say find a tree that has a V in it like this and you take your branch and you can just snap it off between the V of the branch like that I think this is tip number eight and this goes back to the key um, one thing I find it an easy way to keep from losing the key, losing your key on trail, as soon as you park your car and you lock it up, put your key in a zippered pocket. I got these, I hike with these shorts exclusively, these hike hiking shorts. I'll put it in this back pocket right here. That pocket stays zippered all the way until I get back to my car. I don't open it up for anything. I don't want it accidentally falling out. Um, so other than what I would do is it's kind of awkward to sleep on with this. So I'll take it and put it in this side pocket and zip it back up. But find a pocket somewhere that has a zipper that you're not going to open. Maybe on the, if you have like long pants and they have a zippered pocket, you know, just put it there. And you won't have to regret losing your key on trail. Tip number nine, going back in my backpack here, is uh, this is like a, a microfiber towel I got from REI. Uh, very useful. Uh, I really don't need this. I could take this off. This, this will pack inside this little thing just so it's real small. Um, but yeah, I could probably take that off. I have this attached with a small a small little uh, carabiner to this loop on the back of my pack. And what I do is I hang it over the front so it's hanging over here like this. It'll be just like this. This is hanging over here. I like the orange one. It just gives me a little extra you know, visibility for, during hunting season. So this is hanging over here the whole time I'm hiking. If I need to blow my nose or wipe some sweat off my face, it's right there. And I think we're at tip number 10. This involves food again is don't leave your food sitting around unattended at camp. Like say you have to go out in the, in the woods to dig a cat hole or whatever, um, or you're hanging a food line. Those chipmunks and those mice, they will look for any opportunity to get to your food. So if you're gonna go out into the woods for a few minutes, just just hang your food bag up on, even on the um, on your ridge line of your hammock, or, or just hang it somewhere where they're not gonna get to it. And I'm sure that one's been mentioned in probably in other videos before. Tip number 11, keep a change of clothes in your car. When you get back to your car after your trip, you might have mud all over you. You're gonna have mud on your shoes. Your clothes are gonna be wet from sweating or whatever. Just have a, chain, a clean change of clothes in your car uh, ready to change into. I think we're at tip number 12. This involves a headlamp, which is in my electronics bag. Okay, so something this small. I see a lot of people that say they keep their headlamp in their in their side pocket on their bag, like right, right here on their hip belt pocket. Um, that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And here's why. Um, it's not like it's going to go boom like that and it's going to go from bright sunshine to pitch black. You're going to know, you're going to have time to stop somewhere, take your pack off, get your ditty bag out, which I keep toward the top of my pack. Then I'll just put the headlamp around my neck. I'll just wear it around my neck until it gets dark enough that I really need, do need it. I could easily see, if you have it in your hip belt pocket, you open that pocket to get your snack, bag of snacks or something out. Something this small falls out, you won't even notice it. You'll go to... It'll, it starts to get dark, you reach for your headlamp and it's seven miles back on the trail. So um, yeah, I keep this in the electronics bag in my backpack until it starts getting around dusk. Tip number 13, this involves, if you have one of these kilts, these, this is a Z-Pax rain kilt, um, and this is, this is specifically for hammockers. I've found where, now this zipper is broken on this, but what you can do is my, my old tarp, I didn't have doors on my old tarp, so what I would do with this is if it was raining, I would attach this around my um, 
right around the ridge line of my uh, of my tarp, and I would cinch this down so it's so it's like this, and zip this up to just give me a little bit of extra coverage on the end of on the end of the tarp um, without the doors. I've also had this happen where I've had the I haven't had my uh, hammock centered completely, so the very end of my hammock was sticking out uncovered. So this will cover it up. You could always also do the same thing with a you know your raincoat, but then if you had to get out in the middle of the night and it's raining, your raincoat's up there. So something to think about. And last but not least, tip number fourteen. This is my favorite one. Um, Pre-dig a cat hole. Okay. Um, I did see, I've never seen anybody mention this I, until last week. I was watching Justin from Justin Outdoors and he mentioned this. Um, but I know there are other people that do this. So what I'm saying about this is when I get to camp, there's a few things I want to do before it gets dark. Is I want to, you know, obviously set up my hammock and everything. Um, I'm going to hang a food bag line, so that's ready to go. Uh, I'm going to filter any water that I might need. But I'm also going to go out in the woods and I am going to find a place to dig a cat hole. Now, me personally, I usually have to go first thing in the morning, and there's nothing worse than when you really got to go, you're walking around through the woods trying to find a place to dig a hole, and then you got to dig the hole, and then your hands are all dirty. Make it one of your camp chores when you first get to camp. Go out and dig, find a place to dig a cat hole, and you won't regret it. One other thing about the digging the cat hole is pay attention after you dig the cat hole. Look around for a landmark. Like say, okay, think to yourself, I'm going to go from camp straight out toward the only gigantic sycamore tree and make a right. Or I'm going to go up over the ridge and look for the boulder and the, the cat hole is right behind that boulder. So that way you know exactly where it's at the next morning you didn't forget. And you're walking around the woods trying to find that cat hole. So that's all I got for this one. I'm sure there's things I'm forgetting. So I'll probably have to do a follow-up video once I uh, get another list of these ready to go. But uh, yeah, hopefully you got some uh, useful information out of this. And uh, thanks for watching.